uh, Sheikh Tahir to give an introduction uh, for Molan Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. It's not easy to give an introduction for such a personality, a worldwide personality as Sheikh Hisham Qabbani, but I will quickly go through some details of his bio. Maulana Sheikh Hisham was born in January 45 in Beirut, Lebanon, to a prominent family, both Hassani and Husseini. And he was raised in a family where the long line of scholars had come and he was a student of many different scholars in Lebanon and in Damascus, Syria. And he was with Maulana Sheikh Nazim al-Haqqani for more than 50 years, a disciple and a representative in a Khalifa. And he's married to Maulana Sheikh Nazim's daughter, Hajja Naziha, and they're blessed with four children. In 1990, Maulana Sheikh Hisham moved to the United States and began to spread the teachings of Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat against the current that was existing then, which you all know about it. And he was opposed, of course, but he stood firm on the belief in Tasawwuf, the belief in Mashaykh, the belief in Mawlid and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He put together more than four websites devoted to Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat Aqeedah. He put the Muslim magazine, he put two huge international conferences and invited speakers, ulama from, or distinguished ulama from around the world to show that Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaat Aqeedah is the right Aqeedah. And he continues to work tirelessly today. He has more than two million miles of jet mileage on his uh, mileage account. He doesn't stop moving, going from Indonesia, Southeast Asia to the Arab world to Turkey, to Europe. He just came from a trip in Spain where he gave dawah to many, many non-Muslims. Recently, he introduced and brought ex-president of Pakistan, Musharraf, to greet and meet with Maulana Sheikh Nazim in Cyprus. And he meets with many distinguished leaders of the world and speaks to them in a way to show the tolerance of Islam and against its extremism. With no further ado, I introduce Sheikh Hisham Qabbani. Nare takbir, nare risalat, lumai ala sunnat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lil islami wa ma kunna linahtadi ya lawla an hadana Allah Alhamdulillahi alladhi ja'alana min ummati al-habib al-mustafa alayhi afdalu salatu wa salamu Oh, brothers and sisters, it's a pleasure for me to be here tonight for the remembrance of the celebration of Prophet Wasallam birthday. Too many speakers around the world, they are celebrating around the year. Every day, almost, the Prophet birthday. It is not something that we can control. It is something that it is the hand of, in the hand of heavens. The Prophet Sallallahu birthday is not only on earth, but on every planet around the world. In every constellation, in every system, galaxy, in every heavens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if there is nine. Allah, there is infinite number of heavens. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being celebrated every day, every moment in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala presence and in the angels presence where Allah says in Holy Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi. Before I continue, I don't know how much time I have 
But really, no one can explain and or express his feelings toward the love of Prophet Sallallahu It is a something that is very difficult to, to express and to speak about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I am seeing something mm, not extraordinary, but something that we have to improve, I think, between the community that they are here tonight. In England, we, met, we did many masajid, many celebration on Prophet's birthday this year, but the community, the Pakistani community is not like here. The Pakistani community is strong. Here I'm feeling no energy. When they say takbir, Narai takbir, Narai risalat, Narai haydri. Oh, I don't know why we are sleeping here. We have to energize ourselves. Let me hear from you now. Someone say Narai takbir. Narai takbir. Allahu Akbar. Continue. Where is the stop? Maulana, what? Not correct? They said you have to speak. Why am I going to speak? There are, mashallah, speakers here. They can speak about importance of the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and celebration of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was thinking what I am going to say. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what He gave to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He did not give anyone. Very simple. What Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah created first? Is the light of Prophet. What Allah created first is the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Alayhi Afdal Salatu Wasallam. After the creation of his light, Allah created from that light all other creations. And we don't want to go through that hadith, it's a long hadith. When Allah want to create a creation, he took the light of Prophet, put it in Bahru al-Qudra, in the ocean of energy, power. And in that ocean, it was turning and turning and turning and turning. As it turned, it produced energy. And you know in physics, that when the turbine turn, what it produced? Energy, make the aeroplane to fly. So when Prophet Wasallam light was turning and turning and turning and turning, Allah created from that light all creation. Not only, not only uh, dunya, dunya is finishing, dunya is ending, dunya is going. What is not going is what is important. Allah created from that light heavens and earth. He created heavens, He created this universe. From the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From that light that Prophet is dressing. If you have, if you have, you're carrying a book, you don't know what is inside the book. If you are the one that you wrote the book, you don't know what is inside the book. This creation is being created from the light of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet doesn't know his light. That's why he said, I have been informed, I knew the knowledge of before, knowledge of after. Say, Narai Takbir! Narai Risalat! What's this? That's correct, that's good. So this light, this light is giving us, you can see us. If there is no such light like this light, spotlight, you cannot see us. This light is the light that is producing power, energy. That energy 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it that energy from the Bahrul Qudra that is turning and still turning and still coming creation after creation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Khaliq. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam is the messenger of all creations from beginning to no end. So who can speak about Prophet sallallahu wasallam? Look his miracles. One of his miracles. In the morning, at, 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 ex, nearly in the early morning, he eats seven dates and one cup of milk. What he eats? Ah. Every day. Never stopped. And Sahaba asked, and he said, this mixture of date and milk produce power to the brain to think well. And take the poison from the body. So people, Sahaba used to eat seven dates and milk. Recently, six, seven years ago, scientists try to say why Prophet Wasallam said that what's inside the milk and the dates. So they take the mixture of milk, one cup of milk and the seven dates, put them in an artificial stomach with all the enzymes and the acids that is in the stomach, they put it in that artificial stomach and it begins to work. And suddenly, a blue light was coming from the stomach all the way up to the center of the brain. That they were, they were able to see. More, more. Allahu Akbar! Ya Rasul Allah! Ya Ali! Haydri! Ali! Jive, Jive! Murshid Jive! I'm learning. So they, they found that the mixture is creating, bringing a light blue color up to the brain and they found that that light is working on the brain to increase the level of intelligence in the brain. And they found the rest of the mixture was going between the skin and the muscles where poison usually go from the liver and live in between the skin and the muscles. So they found out that this mixture was killing the poison that it is accumulated between the skin and the muscles. This is 1400 years ago. Prophet wasallam was able, knowing through scientists what they knew after 1400 years. This is uh, one of his miracles. Scientific miracles, what we can say. Who was able to do, to do that? No one. He said in his hadith, I observe the amal of my ummah. If I see good, hamadtullah. If I see bad, staghfartu lahum. I will ask forgiveness on, on their behalf. Okay, did we think a little bit about that meaning of that hadith? We are all clever to say he is Hazar Nazar. Correct? He is Hazar in, in, in Urdu, Hazar. Nadir, Nadir, Nazar, same, Nazar. He is present and he is hearing, he is seeing. Yo, for a normal person can hear and can, can see what people cannot see. 
What do you think about Prophet? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا دَامَ عَبْدِ يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرُهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ As long as my servant approaches me through voluntary worshipness, I will love him. When I love him, I will be his ears that he can hear with, he can be his eyes, can he see with. If that for a person, human being, a normal person, what about Prophet He said, I observe the amal. Look at the difference. I observe the amal of my ummah. How he can observe the amal of the ummah? How many of his ummah? In the same moment, in the same moment, he can see every one of his ummah. That is the meaning, Hazar Nadir. In a moment, he can see everyone what they are doing, and not one overlap on the other one. He can see everyone separate with their names, with what they are doing, and how they are, how he is asking istighfar on their behalf, asking Allah to forgive them. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ya Rasul Allah! Ya Ali! Ya Ghawthiya! Zindabad! Allahu Akbar. Oh, that's good. I'm preparing them for you. Uh, where we arrived. So he can see, he can see the whole Ummah in the same moment. Can we see in the same moment more than one person? He can see us, knows everything about us. Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi afdalu salatu was salam. O Muslims, don't underestimate his powers. Allah said, Allah said, Maraj al Bahraini al Taqiyan. Bainahuma barzakhun la yabghiyan. When he said that, min al azal. But when Holy Quran been revealed 1400 years ago. Allah said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Maraj al Bahraini al Taqiyan. He made the two oceans to meet together. Between them, Barzakhun la yabghiyan. Between them, there is a quarantine that, the, that cannot be surp, um, um, Cannot be, uh, one ocean cannot come on the, on the other ocean. They are, huh? Cannot be assimilated to each other. One and the other one. They found today, scientists, that the two oceans, Mediterranean Ocean and Atlantic Ocean, when they meet together, or any oceans, they meet together, there is a quarantine between them that the fish can come inside for 40 days to be adopting themselves to the ocean. And then they can move to, can move to the Atlantic Ocean or they can move to the Mediterranean Ocean. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> ya Rasulullah. <laughs> ya Ali. How Prophet knew that, understood that? Ar-Rahman allam al-Qur'an. Allah taught the Holy Qur'an. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Jibreel alayhi salam coming to him and saying, Ya Rasul Allah, um, with revelation of Surah Maryam, he was saying, Kaf. He said, Alimtu. He's revealing for him kaf haya ayn sad. He said, alimtu. He said, ha alimtu. Ayn alimtu. Ya alimtu sad alimtu. He said, I say to you and you say alimtu. And you knew. He knew. He knew the knowledge between every letter of the Holy Quran. 
because kaf is a letter, ha is a letter, ya is a letter, ayn is a letter, sad is a letter, but it is not a letter that we cannot understand, but Prophet can understand what is behind every letter, oceans of knowledge. There is no restriction and limitation of the meanings of every letter of Holy Quran. Alif is a letter. But in the same time is a word. If it was only a letter, it will have a meaning. If it, if it is only a letter, it, 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 it cannot carry a meaning. But if it is a word, it carry a meaning. So why ulama al-ummah, they put many interpretation of the meaning of alif lam mim. Of Hamim Ain Sin Kaf or Kaf Haya Ain Sad. Every letter has a meaning that no one knows except Prophet. But Prophet gave everything to the Ummah. He didn't keep it for himself. Means the Ummah can understand these hidden knowledges. As in the Hadith al Qudsi. Prophet وسلم, said, I just mentioned it. As long as my servant approaches me through voluntary worshipness, I will be his ears that he can hear with, his eyes can see with, his tongue that he can speak with. Means these, these meanings will be poured in your heart. But as long as you are a good person, and what is good person? Good person is the person that does salawat on Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam without stopping, because he is imitating angels. Allah said to a holy to all angels, "Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi." Who are these angels? How many? There is no limitation. In Allah wa malaikatahi, all of them, he said. Those whom he created, those who is creating now, and those who will be created in the future, all of them are making salawat on Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasul Allah. Little bit let us think. These angels, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billion, billion, trillion, quadrillion, more. And all of them in the same time are doing salawat non-stopping on Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you, you think what kind of darud they are making salawat on Prophet with? Huh? What Darud? Just uh, Dr. Abdul Qadir asked me which Darud we have to read. I was saying, oh, angels, which Darud are, are reciting? You think these billions and billions and billions of angels, they recite the same Darud? No way! Then you are limiting Allah's greatness. Every angel is doing special darud for himself. Salawat on Prophet sallallahu And if we say that that angel is repeating the same darud on Prophet sallallahu is limitation to Allah's power. Every angel do salawat darud on Prophet sallallahu The next darud must be different. Is not a copy machine for making copies. Every angel is doing salawat on the Prophet وسلم, in every moment. He is doing salawat. The second moment, it is different salawat. The third moment is different salawat. And count billions and billions and billions of angels are doing salawat. What kind of power a Prophet is dressing? Oh, people. Say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. 
ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر والعظمه لله والعزه لله ولرسوله وللمؤمنين او مؤمن celebration of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we are doing is imitation of this celebration that is being doing every day every moment in paradise what you think about prophets about angels are making the road is not a celebration to make it the road is a celebration of prophet birthday so if we make the road we are imitating whom? Uh -huh. Angels. Angels and whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he say, oh Muhammad say to them, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum Allah. If you really love Allah, follow Muhammad. We are following by doing the road on him, imitation of the road, that the original the road is up in heavens. We are imitating. We will get the same blessings that angels, when they are making the road on Prophet, what Allah is dressing Prophet, Prophet is dressing his Ummah. Oh, Mu'min, it's not, it's not simple to speak about Prophet. Look the moon. Look the moon. Everyone on earth can see the moon or not? In the same time or not? Yes. When you are in a different country, all the country will see the moon. Same time. Millions of people, they see the moon in the same time, in the same moment. There is difference between this country and other country in the East, 24 hours, the time zone. But everyone sees the moon. And the moon sees you. You see the moon, and the moon can see you. Who is the moon? Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the moon. Sirajam Munira. He is a delight that reflects on everyone. And you can see, he can see the moon, the light of the moon can see everyone, can reach everyone in the same moment. That's why I don't think it's too much that Prophet can reach you in every moment. All of you together in the same time. See the power of Prophet That light, we can all see it in the same time. So all of us, if we are able to reach the level of the hadith of Prophet wasallam, that as long as my servant approaches me, I will be his ears that he can hear with, I will be his eyes that he can see with. Then we can see the light of Sayyidina Muhammad shining on this room. Don't think he is away. He's present. Ya Sayyidi, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rahmatan lil alameen. Ya Shafi al Muznibin. Scientist, I'm only giving some examples in order that because many youth here, they understand they are studying. Some of them physics, some of them engineers, some of them whatever it is, chemistry or whatever. Take the second. Scientists, they said, we want to see how much. How, mu how much fraction of a second we can find in the time? The time is consists of hours, minutes, and seconds. They said, okay, we know the hours, 60 minutes. We know the 60 minute is, uh, the minute is a 60 second. But one second, can we go down more? And if we go down more, what will happen? So they, can, they begin to break the second. Less and less, less and less. Until it reached 10 to minus 22, means 0 0.00000022 zeros one, smallest fraction of a second. 10 to minus 22, 0 0.00000022 zero, and then one, which is, cannot be seen. 
smaller than the atom, smaller than the icon, smaller than anything. The time collapsed. No more time. Because from beginning, time is imaginary. The fourth, fourth dimension is imaginary. The three dimensions you can see, but you cannot see the fourth dimension. Because you don't have the eyes that you can see. But if Allah gives you that eyes, you can see them, the fourth dimension. So the time collapsed. What happened? No more time. What happened? Everything turned into energy. Taqa. And we know Taqa and Nur. And Nur is the Taqa. The light is the energy. With that source of energy, the light can do everything. With the light, with the energy, you can move a bar of iron, one ton. You cannot move it by your hand. You can move it with a crane, with an engine that has electricity in it, that has taqa in it. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah addressed him with Bahrul Qudra, with the ocean of taqa, of power. That through him, everything shines, everything appears. Everything we can see. Oh Muslims, I will not be taking too much time. But we are very happy to say that three years in a row now, in England, with our friends, the Pakistani communities, we were able to perform three times the Mawlid al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the exact day of 12 Rabi'u al-Awwal to celebrate the Prophet's birthday in the House of Common, in the Parliament, with many delegations, many different MPs and ministers. For the third time, that is not simple. To be able to go inside and do, to do the maulid of Prophet wasallam, that is something that, inshallah, is going to go everywhere around the world. When I came here, 1991, there was very few people doing celebration of Prophet ﷺ. Today, every masjid is running to do that. For whatever reason they like, never mind. Some people, they do it turning from, from what they were before Salafi, turning now to Sufis, because they get money from some people who are doing maulid. Never mind. Do, take money, but do it. Don't keep quiet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and bless us and bless this ummah. There are coming heavy days, difficult days. We are not in a time that it is easy time. We are in a difficult time. Keep to yourself. And Prophet وسلم, he said one thing which we have to carry all of us. All your worship that you are doing it's for you. But I have come, I have been sent to complete and perfect your manners and behaviors. And if you can, Maulanas are here. Prophet sallallahu said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ He gave a decision that he is going to complete the manners of his ummah, the behaviors, the manners, good manners, the moral excellence, means maqamul ihsan. To complete, yeah. 
we he didn't complete us we are still uh, we have bad manners we fight with each other we are angry with each other jealous from each other so what's that mean then the hadith means it, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidul Rusul took a decision on himself that you will not die without being perfected by the good manner that Prophet taking responsibility for it. Rasulullah <laughs> Ya Ali means no Muslim no mu'min will leave dunya without seeing Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam completing for him his good manners and behaviors. He took it on his responsibility in front of Allah where he say, Innama bu'ithtu, I have been sent, means Allah has sent me to complete your manners. No one can leave this dunya without good manners in the day of the day of the soul going out of your body. He will be there waiting for you to dress you. If you were not able to get it in dunya, you are going to get it when you are going to die. That is a, what Prophet Wasallam has mentioned in that hadith. And there are many about his rahmah. There is no time. I have to stop now. May Allah forgive us. May Allah bless us. ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة تكبير يا علي حق جارية يا رسول الله يا علي نرى تكبير نرى رسالة نرى حيدري نرى صديق نرى فاروق نرى Assalamu alaikum. Subhanallah, subhanallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. That was very, very energy, and as we were lack of energy now, mashallah. Uh, Malana Sheikh Hisham has really encouraged us. And so,